So we'll move to the next uh, video encoding technique. And uh, this technique is called as H263. So as the name suggests, uh, it is an upgraded version. Okay. Previously, we were looking at H261. So it, it is, it's getting uh, upgraded over here so let's write some of the fundamental characteristics okay so this basically targets the low data rates right uh, of the order normally it is lesser than the 28 kbps speed all right so it can compress any video to of uh, normally uh, 10 to 15 frames per second right uh, which is which can be uh, considered as a 20 kbps uh, if you want to look at the bits per second so frames per second into the bit, bits per second we can actually uh, do a conversion and we can check that any video which is present around the 10 to 15 fps frames per second can be uh, if we can apply this particular conversion standard and uh, because of uh, which ultimately we can see that it attains a uh, what you call as a data rate of uh, 20 kbps up to right so that's now we mentioned 28 kbps so I, I can write an example so for an example right uh, aq cif video of 10 to 15 fps frames per second can be can be compressed to around 20 kbps that's the speed so less than 28 we mentioned so this is well within that okay uh, so it can be used for video conferencing over the normal telephonic line right so our previous discussion was about h261 wherein we introduced the concept of telephonic uh, uh, video conferencing right now this can be actually right further extended in case of the h263 okay so it uses it uses uh, a standard video codec. So standard video codec that can be used, that can be used for the video conferencing video conferencing over uh, telephonic telephone lines because we know that telephonic lines do not have a huge bandwidth available right within the restricted one if you want to uh, transmit even the along with the audio you want to send a video means you need to compress the video right so that is our fundamental idea okay so because of for this right uh, initially initially they were uh, the intention was to use it for a telephonic conversation right plus the video okay video plus this but later on uh, uh, this was actually uh, used in the isdn based video conferencing and even the video conferencing over internet or the network okay so that was the uh, later application of H263. Okay, so let me just write that as well. Also used in ISDN based. conferencing and it's also used uh, in the network 
based. So network basically we refer to the internet itself. Okay. Internet based video conferences. Okay. Then uh, so normally how the construction is made up, right? So whenever we want to apply the H263. Right, so there are, uh, uh, it is fundamentally based on, right, uh, several layers of what you call uh, compressions, okay. So the first one is called as a baseline codec, right. So there is a baseline codec, that's the, it's, you can consider that as a base, uh, the fundamental. But above that, you have unrestricted, extended uh, mode of compression, which is called as a motion vector. Right. So after that, we have advanced the prediction mode. Okay. Then we have a syntax based arithmetic coding mode. So these are the various modes present, right, in the H263. But the first one is considered as a very standard one. Okay. So let's let's start with the. This is something like the the the, the rough procedure, right, which we normally can apply. So that is the H. 263 is it's composed of a baseline codec plus uh, four. optional modes okay so they are the first one is called as the right baseline codec it's already mentioned uh, the baseline codec is the first thing okay which we need to apply right the four optional modes i'll write namely the optional modes are like okay so this is uh, the unrestricted or it's the extended okay so this is also referred to as the the motion vector mode right then the second mode is called as an advanced prediction Then there is another mode called as the CD frames mode, and the fourth mode is called as the arithmetic code. Right, these are the various uh, modes, and what are the standard frame formats that were supported by the H263? Right when it was in uh, originally invented. Okay, so the standard frame formats are. So if you remember, if uh, let us consider the. Uh, Okay, the color scheme used in the H261. Do you remember? It's not RGB. What is it called? Are we able to uh, recall the name? Which format of coloring or which scheme of coloring was used? The scheme of coloring, right? Yeah. What is the color scheme used uh, in case of you can see here, right? So this one. Yeah, yeah. Right, so it's a YCB and YCB CR. Right, so the same scheme we is also going to be uh, retained when we you got, when we are going to use the H two sixty three. Okay, so here uh, the color coloring uh, uh, sorry uh, the coloring scheme remains same YCB CR. Okay, luminance oh. and the chrominance. Right, but uh, the sizes might vary. Right, according yeah. to the the various requirements. Okay, so mm. now uh, let's see. 
So uh, okay, let me try to make a table here that's going to be easy to analyze. Okay, so let me write the format here. What's the format name? There is a name given to the format. What is the Y value? And what's the CB and the CR? CR. Okay, so first okay. one is called as the SQCIF format. All right, so this mm. is actually referred to as uh, the, the one of the smallest size supported by this. Okay, it's a Y value, right? The luminance is 128 into 96. The CBCR value will be 64 into 48. Okay, okay. so that's the uh, smallest one. Then the next size is uh, the QCIF. Okay. okay, so it's it has a specific specification of Y that is 176 into 144. This is supported. Again, uh, the CBCR is 88 into 72. Hmm. Right, then and there are totally five four formats uh, supported. Okay, so this is the second one. The third one is CIF. Right, this is almost double. So 352 into 288. And okay. 176 into 144. So that's the mm. next format, the third format. Then we go for the fourth format here. This is called as a 4CIF format. Right? Okay. So uh, QCIF into uh, 4, I guess. Yeah. So that's 704 into 576, then 352 cross 288. Similarly, there is another format called this is the largest format and the last format we have 16 CIF. So that will be 1408 into 1152 and 704 into 576. Okay, everything, every, every uh, format is actually of a specific aspect ratio. So that is always. 12 to 11 aspect ratio is used. Okay. Okay. Fine. So, uh, come back to uh, the uh, picture format, right? Uh, how the various pictures are uh, transmitted, what are the various frames present in the pictures? And what are the various macro blocks in case of the H263? Already we have studied the same topics under the H261. It can be cons considered like a comparison algorithm. All right. So okay. next we are going to look at the picture and the macro blocks. <clears throat> macro blocks. All right. So, uh, basically, if you remember, uh, H261 had two different types of uh, types, right? Picture types or the frames, all right? So, same thing is even continued here, right? So, I'll write two basic types of picture yeah. frames. So, do you remember any names? any of the names uh, we used for uh, the frames that are used in H261? Uh, uh, yeah, we use the uh, iframe. Hmm. One is iframe, correct. The other is uh, B frame, right? Uh, it's it's P frame. Okay? P, P, P. P frame, perfect. Okay, yeah, that's so what, we uh, have uh, two types of frames. Same frames are continued even here, hmm. right? So, uh, as we just now uh, discussed, the first frame is called as a I frame. If you remember the basics of I frame, uh, you are not going to use any temporal prediction. Okay, so I'll just write no. Temporal prediction is performed. Okay, that's your I frame. Uh, actually, this is intra. Okay, 
Right. Similarly, we have another frame that is a P frame. Okay, so this is the inter. So here, uh, this will employ the temporal prediction. Okay, so temporal prediction is employed over here. Right, coming to the macro blocks, right? So the various blocks, let me write. Uh, the macro blocks, right? So uh, there are, uh, you, you, you have options here, intra and inter macro blocks, right, are present. Normally you can use it. The first option is that, the inter micro, uh, sorry, macro blocks have the shorter symbols, right? They, they're, the duration will be shorter whenever they are present inside the P frames. Okay, whenever you consider the intra macro blocks, right? They are present but with a shorter duration or a shorter coding, shorter symbols whenever they are present inside the I frames. Okay, so these are the uh, uh, basic. Uh, options we have okay let me write it in this way so if you use the uh, intra or the inter macro blocks intra or inter macro blocks can be used right can be used so it, it doesn't matter where you are using right i i will just write it in this way so maybe the p frames or the i frames okay so this is the first thing now how do you use it right if you want to use it then you need to follow the following uh, following point let's say okay so if you are using in the inter Okay, the inter macro blocks, uh, okay, should have should have short symbols. So when the symbols are shorter, that if if you want to. Uh, take the time into consideration, time also becomes less, okay? So that's how it is. So have shorter symbols uh, inside whenever they are present in the P frames. Okay, at the same time, the intra macro blocks. So they are going to have uh, let's say short symbols in the I frames. You can use as they want, right? And uh, if at all you are using the inside the P frames, follow the point number two. If you are using inside the intra, then follow the third point. Okay. Then Normally, uh, we have seen this. This is again copied. Uh, this is again followed from the H two sixty one, right? We know that the macro block uh, data you don't have to code it separately, and you can copy it from the previous frame itself. Whatever is your previous frame, you can refer that and you can write. All right, so we can write it's not coded, and uh, the macro block data can be copied from the previous uh, decoded frame. 
right? So this is the other feature, right? This that pretty much uh, matches with the H two sixty one, right? So because of uh, that particular aspect, uh, now we understand that H two sixty three is actually an extended version of X two sixty one, right? Two sixty one, whatever it is capable of, it, this is still does that plus it does something addition to that. Okay, so now we'll see. Uh, this is some, the the. Uh, the the optional formats whatever we had we are going to look at them one by one now okay so the one of the option was the motion vector okay so if you try to compare the this was there uh, in h261 h261 was considered to be right every pixel used to be considered right uh, for right identifying the motion vector in the sense i have an object present right you put a boundary box about uh, boundary boundary box or bounded box about uh, an object next picture right since it is video you just have to identify where the object moves only that part you can actually try to encode and other part uh, the other half remain same because you that is the background right so wherever you have a background of the image or background of the a video you don't have to encode that because the first video itself will encode everything right so the motion vectors were considered to be uh, for an accuracy level of one pixel every pixel was supposed to be encoded over there. okay so that's when that's when we consider uh, h261 okay now so here, what you try to do here is that you don't consider the complete pixels uh, at once. You can consider one for two pixels. Okay, so it's said to be right. The motion vectors have a granularity of half the pixel here because two pixels you consider at once. So when you say I am considering one pixel, it is equivalent to half of the pixel. Correct. So two is to one ratio. Right. Two pixels you consider together. When you consider the motion vectors here okay in case of the uh, h263 so you see that the difference is it's said to be uh, having a granularity of the half pixel all right so 50 percent right so the first point is that uh, okay uh, okay the I can write granularity of the motion picture is one by two pixel. Right? Understand it? Like there is no half pixel actually, but it, it the technically they are measuring it in in the form of a half pixel that is because you consider for two pixels at one right so two pixels you get a value so when you convert it into a one pixel you say that half of it. okay so that that's all now uh, if you compare the motion vectors of uh, say the h261 they were directly coded okay but here the motion vectors are not directly coded. You can use any standard predictors such as uh, like the mean value, median value, mode, etc. Right? We have many uh, many measure measures available. You can use any of them. Okay. So this is actually a difference that comes into picture when you compare this with the H two sixty one. So the motion vectors are not directly coded okay so that means you need a coding right uh, you will use a predictor for uh, this purpose okay i'll write and some sort of predictors are used for this 
So such as uh, mean predictors, or you can also use the median predictors, etc. So in the sense, so you already have the uh, motion vectors of all your previous images, right? So current image, there will not be a huge difference, correct? Compared to the previous picture uh, in a video to the current frame in your video, your object will not move by a huge distance, okay? So because of that, the where your object is located in the present video can be marked by using what is called as a motion vector. So that motion vector can be easily predicted now. You don't, you don't have to do something like, uh, you don't have to think that, okay, it is look, you need to uh, calculate it separately each time, right? So what can be done? You can simply predict, okay? So the prediction is going to happen in such a way that, right, you can use the mean values of all the past uh, vectors. That's one. The second option is that instead of going for uh, a mean, you can go for a median, right? So, right, obtain all, you, you uh, use all the past uh, motion vectors available and find the med median of that, right? That's also going to work. Okay, so that that that's what is the the motion pick motion vectors prediction is going to be used, right? So, right, fine. So let's go ahead. The next option, this is again another optional uh, uh, method available, right? So we are going to call it as a transform transform coefficient coding right so in key in such in case now we now know that we are supposed to uh, transform the x y and the z values corresponding to each of the image right we have to assign a variable length code to do this. So because the coding happens, every every pixel has a location associated with that. That will give you x comma y. And the, the pixel value refers to a third dimension. Okay. So that is also needs to be coded now. Okay. So why do you need three different uh, parameters? Because of this. Okay. That's the first point. Uh, coming to the second point, whenever I have, uh, say, these many uh, values possible, right? So each of the parameter needs to be given a code, okay? Because because you want to uh, convert the values into a into uh, such a format that you are able to transmit that or you are able to save it in the computer. Right. So these are our uh, fundamental idea behind the, uh, the what you call compression. Compression in the sense you do a coding for that. Okay, now here transform coefficient coding basically refers to, uh, refers to the concept that you try to assign a variable length code to all the three parameters. All right. So here, let me write it in this way. So this deals deals with uh, assigning a variable length code to Three parameters. So why why the uh, why why variable length code? Why not a fixed one? So the answer is like this. Now you see the x comma y values 
right whatever you are trying to assign over there they will be smaller in in a sense the quantity will be lesser like one comma one two comma through two or maybe right uh, so 100 comma 100 etc but when you compare uh, the value that every pixel can take is normally higher than that so you cannot fix the same length this can be even reverse if you are going for 1024 into 1024 image right so you see the x comma y values are larger whereas the brightness may be just 0 to 255 correct so both ways it is possible right you cannot say that i will fix it to a fixed length always so that's why it is a variable length code all right that's the first thing now uh, you can even uh, opt for the uh, uh, run length coding you might have heard of right so when you studied the you might have studied a coding theory somewhere uh, in any of your uh, uh, past uh, subjects have you studied uh, what is called as a, a coding theory error control coding or something yeah any having error control coding yeah okay so embed, in, in embedded systems we study that right okay all right so you have uh, that subject that topic uh, already discussed right we, having or uh, hanning okay uh, hanning, hanning yes many many types of code. black one is there. okay all right so because of uh, anyway so you have an introduction to that already so that means we all uh, click redundancy check is also a type of that right true 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 absolutely yeah right so anyway so since you are aware of that okay uh, I, i'll hmm. skip the introduction to that right uh, now, uh, so we need such codings here, right? So that's that's the ultimate point. Now you also have what is called as a uh, run length coding, right? Where you try to pad runs of zeros, right? Proceedings to the current non-zero coefficient, right? That that's that's the padding concept. Okay. So here I'll also write that point. Certain length of runs of zeros are added preceding the non-zero non-zero coefficient then uh, you can see that uh, you can also do the coding of the amplitude right amplitude in the sense of magnitude not the x comma y the uh, at, at, at a given x comma y you will have what is called as a magnitude right so that magnitude can also be right uh, coded all right so coding of magnitude or you can even call that as a amplitude right so some of the authors might call it as a coefficient okay coefficient of amplitude or coefficient of magnitude that's absolutely fine because at a given point of x comma y like one comma one you have a magnitude so that becomes a coefficient a a one comma one so at a location say one comma three this is one comma two this is one comma three you have a different magnitude coming into picture all right so that is a that's actually a coefficient a1 comma 3 right so it's it's it can be this can be 1.5 this can be 1.9 or something you see that right they are talking about the uh, value or the or the multiplier the constant with which you multiply at each location so they can that that's why right uh, some will refer this as the coefficient as Okay, so don't get confused when you read that in that sense. Okay. Uh, then uh, normally, what are the lengths we'll write? So standard lengths used uh, for this kind of coding. The I'll write the standard variable length used. will be 3 to 13 bits 
okay this value is uh, when the h263 was originally used later on it was changed okay so later on they actually added the with the escape sequences also previously it was not included so i'll write the escape sequences are also coded right with the 22 bits right this is again not during the initial uh, stages okay this was towards the end right when h263 was being used and utilized and a lot of research was being done over there and it towards the end okay then you see if you try to compare uh, uh, the the concepts we studied in the h261 there is a, what is called as a step uh, which performs the quantization all right so the next comparison uh, that should happen if you want to compare with the h261 it should be in terms of the quantization so quantization is nothing but right you are trying to assign the fixed levels for your y axis right discretization of your y axis in the sense amplitude values will be discretized right so in order to perform uh, what is called as a quantization right what do we expect right what uh, say what's which is the tool or which is a device that performs the quantization do you have any idea about that yeah so it has to be a quantizer so there will be what is called as a quantizer and the quantizer is going to perform the quantization so what are the various types of quantize uh, maybe what are the various th various types of the quant types of quantizers you have uh, come across are you able to are you able to recall that the various types of quantizers yes uh... maybe we have studied in uh, a different subject maybe uh, may not be in the subject or something uh yeah okay. yeah i don't remember them right now okay absolutely fine so uh, basically they are uh, uh, divided into two types okay one is a scalar one is a vector okay scalar quantization and the vector quantization okay again inside the uh, again there they can be further subdivided into right the the, depending upon the direction in which you do the quantization right so vector or not scalar or vector you can define that and there is another one which uh, basically looks at what value you are trying to quantize okay either the x range or the y range okay so uh, have you have you come across what is called as a, a mid a mid riser quantization mid tread quantization etc right have you Across, no right in any other subject no uh, no uh, where you studied the quant uh, i think uh, analog to digital conversion or something related to that because if you have studied the adc dac part then the quantization should have been there or just just try to recall okay if not then fine okay. anyway we are not going to use them here okay but the quantization concept is important here that's all okay we are going to use the quantization uh, in the, in this case okay so uh, fine so let's uh, move ahead and let's see uh, what can be how the quantization will be used here okay fine so uh, let's do one thing okay let me write the quantization uh, type itself here, uh, like this Right, the H263 uses the scalar type. Okay, the scalar type of quantizer. Right, and uh, uh, there is something like called as uh, the clipping that happens in the quantization. Whenever you perform a quantization, you can try to clip the center value or clip the end values. Okay, so here, uh, I'll write with the 
with the center flipping. Right. Now, uh, the quantizer will vary starting from a either either you can use two levels like from this level to this level I'll do a quantization. Okay, the next is a four, right? You can use four levels and so on. Okay, so like that it can go in in case of uh, H263, you can go up to the right, the highest possible level, right? So we can have a zero and the la next uh, the two power numbers right which which are used in h263 is up to 63 63 in the sense 64 levels okay zero to that number so 263 comes maybe because of that reason as well all right so i'll just write uh, the quantizer levels vary from 2 to 64 minimum is 2 maximum is 64 that is again under the h263 only we can actually extend this beyond that as well but when the h263 was uh, used or designed right they could go up to the 63 okay 64 is the next number that's why we write that so you can try to vary right like starting from plus or minus 2 right every time you can raise it by 2 so it can become 4 or next is 8 and so on right can be varied so how you can vary can be varied uh, by a factor factor of 2 right so in order to uh, perform this uh, right uh, we have to make two changes all right so that is uh, by a factor two so let me write here so first one is at the macro blocks at the macro blocks so which you, if you change you need to use two bits for that purpose okay and you can also do the same change at the row or the column columns of pictures by five bits. So totally, you see seven bits have are dedicated for that one. So all right. So that's how this will. Uh, we can perform this all right okay then let's move further uh, now we'll come to the syntax format etc so the uh, how the bits are going to be represented right whenever you try to perform the h263 coding right it is going to be called as the bit bit stream syntax right so normally the bit stream can be uh, we can see that the bit stream syntax uses a hierarchy of three layers okay so this is three layer hierarchy Right, so first layer is called as the picture layer. So let's say this is the picture layer, right? So below that, you have the micro blocks coming into picture, right? That is what we call as a GOB layer, right? So we'll, we'll explain that later. So, but just remember the name, this is the GOB layer right so below that another proper layer of uh, micro blocks are used so you can call it as a mb layer so you can see that there are three layers 
right which which are represented in the following uh, format now uh, but again this is a layered architecture but whenever we try to uh, what you call try to send the data right in the sense whenever the actual data gets converted into a different format right so it will be converted into the following notation because i cannot send the layers of data as it is either you need to convert them into the parallel or the series data serial transmission or the parallel transmission correct so because of which the the the, the frame is going to look like this so initially you are going to have what is called as a a picture header right followed by the gob header okay then you have the micro blocks sorry macro blocks coming into picture mb mb dot 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 many mb might come then you don't have to send the picture header again right you need to send or the store the gob header itself okay this can right we can actually extend this further but right the general architecture will be something like this okay so so this is how uh, it is formatted that's the uh, frame format right in which you either try to send the data or you try to save the data right uh, whenever you want to transmit you use you will send it through the transmitter and whenever our intention is to save right uh, we simply save it uh, right in certain uh, location of the uh, computer okay so now the picture layer let's look at the layers uh, one by one so the first layer is uh, the picture layer normally uh, whenever we are considering the picture in the form of a layer right there are four subunits present for that right in order to represent that okay so the first uh, uh, field it is called as the picture star code okay denoted as psc right so why the psc is used it's actually a sequence of bit right uh, it, it, it indicates that you are trying you are beginning the uh, maybe it can be the encoding it can be the decoding it can be the transmission etc or the reception right so they that uh, the beginning of right such a, a frame is indicated by sequence of bits okay the the idea is that if they since they indicate that something is beginning at that point you cannot put them at any other uh, location on the screen it's it has to be at the beginning okay so that's the fundamental idea here sequence of bits that indicate start of the frame okay so the start of the frame is indicated by this so since their intention is to begin something right you cannot uh, put it at any other location so can not be emulated right uh, at any other location at any other location inside the bit stream all right so that's the characteristic of this then we have uh, another field right in the layer so we will call that as the temporal 
temporal reference. So in short, we refer this as the TR. Okay. So whenever we are uh, trying to, maybe we are trying to send the pictures or uh, maybe we have a video which uh, is actually a sequence of pictures, right? There is a time coming into picture, right? Because how many pictures you are showing per second is the frames per second, correct? You may go for 50 frames, anything more than 23 will work because human eyes cannot uh, differentiate, right? Less, uh, more than that. So if at all something, right, uh, you show the number of pictures more than 23 per second, right? So we are going to see that as a video, okay? Anything lesser than 23, like 22, 21 or lesser than that, you feel that, okay, there is a lag between or some frames are being skipped, something like that. We, we human brain can identify that, okay? So something like the sampling rate of our eyes is something around 22 point something. So you keep more than that, 23 or more will work. So standard is 25, 30, 29. There are various uh, uh, video recording standards, right? You might have seen in the, uh, the, the cameras, right? So which will say that, okay, a particular quality like HD quality at 30 FPS, at 60 FPS, at 50 FPS, etc. Even the uh, 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 encoding algorithms will also suggest you to go for a specific uh, what you call frame rate whenever you try to do the encoding right like that so you see here the temporal reference is basically it's a counter okay so that is it actually uses a very standard value called as 29.97 hertz all right so again this was the standard they have used okay so when the h2 uh, 63 was introduced, right? They used a specific value of 29.97. So, because anyway, 22, it should be more than 23, that's already known. But there are very various other standards also. Now, also, you can see if you use any software to encode your video to convert that into any new format. I have a MP4, I want to convert into something else. So, whenever you, you use a software, there is an encoder inside that. Right? That, that will definitely ask what is the frame rate you want right in the output so that is nothing but right this right that that's something similar to this value that is the yeah, temporal reference right so this is uh, basically a i can write 29.97 hertz counter it has a frequency so 1 by 29.97 is the uh, time taken between the curves. All right. So this is a counter indicating the time reference. It's a time reference, right? Uh, for pictures. That's what is this, okay? Then, sorry, that's called as a temporal uh, referencing, right? Then we move ahead. The next field is called as the picture type. So picture type is P type, in short. Right. So this basically denotes uh, what type of uh, uh, frames are your uh, frames are being used or being input. So this basically denotes intra or the inter. Okay, uh, frames coded. Right, which one is coded, etc. It will be shown. All right. So then the next uh, field. This is the last field under this category. Okay. So this is actually the picture picture quantization. It's simply called as pic quant. Okay. So PQ picture quant. Right. Uh, normally denotes which type of the quantizer is initially used for in this particular process.
okay right so d nodes what type of quantizer is used for edge right so we already have discussed one type that's all Actually, there are many other methods as well, right? Yeah. Irrespective of uh, the method used, that which method has been used will be identified over here. Okay, yeah. so that's what is the use uh, of the fourth field called big quant. All right, so we are halfway through the H263. Actually, H263 is much larger and much deeper compared to the yeah. H261. Okay. So we are just halfway through. Uh, we'll be continuing this when we uh, take the same subject uh, in the next.